Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is the third of our installment on Tad Sharp's advice for professional actors. Today's column, today's topic, castings, auditions, and attitude. That's right, attitude. What you think about where you're going and how you're going to do it makes a lot of difference. I've talked to several actors and sadly, uh, for them, a casting is a pain. It's just a uh, necessary evil of the industry. Uh, these are people that most likely will not be getting any jobs. These are people that are hard-pressed to get past any audition or casting. I personally think of a casting as a small theater. It's my opportunity to impress, really impress, the three or four people that are sitting there with a monologue I'm going to do for them, with a cold reading I'm going to do for them. I'm going to, I want to do for them a cold reading like they've never seen done before. I will do for them a monologue that will knock their socks off. I get standing ovations. I really do. I get applause at castings and auditions. I get picked up for over 90% of everything I cast for. Never mind that I am picky and I'm not going to cast for the one eye troll because I'm neither one eye nor a troll nor three feet tall. I cast for things that I know are within my range, my age range, gender, uh, other factors, personality, etc. So it's important for your attitude about your castings to be professional, to look at each casting, each audition as an opportunity to perform, as an opportunity to wow, so an opportunity to impress. If you impress the people you are casting for, congratulations, you will be hired and you will be called back. Correct? That's right. You will be called back. Would it get called back? Impress somebody. Walk in with a bad attitude. Do your casting like you don't want to be there. Well, in that case, don't be there. Go home. Find something else to do. You have no right to be there if you do not walk in with a positive attitude. If you're not prepared to amaze those people. Remember something. You have one chance to make a first impression. One. That's it. One. Not two, not three, not four. One. If you walk in looking wrong, dressed like crap, looking like God only knows what, with a bad mood because somebody just said something wrong to you outside, forget it. You're not getting anything. Go home. Don't even bother opening your mouth. Go home. The second you walk into a casting room, you have to totally change your demeanor, everything, so that the people in casting do not see you bringing into the casting your personal issues. If they see you in casting, already revealing personal issues, they know what will be happening during production. And they don't want that. So you will only not be hired if your attitude is wrong. That's absolutely correct. You have one chance. One, to make a good first impression. Make a good first impression. You start off very well. Do a casting with real emotion. Okay? That's right. Real emotion. Do your lines at the casting like it was for the filming. Like you've got $2 million for the production behind you and an Oscar on the line. Because guess what? If you don't make it through the casting, through the audition, there will be no Oscars, no Emmys, no nothing. The only thing that's for you is the rejection pile over there. Why? Is it because you don't have talent? No, you may have all the talent on earth. But with the wrong attitude, forget it. Bad attitude trumps any kind of talent. That's right. That's absolutely correct. Your attitude, your body language, your energy during your castings is critical. Do not show the wrong energy because it doesn't matter what talent you have. The most talented person on earth. They'd rather have a less talented person that's easy to get along with and that works very well with them than some major talent that's also a major diva, a major pain in the neck, giving everybody a hard time, arguing with people, and trying to change the script already. Which brings to mind another good point. At your casting side, your audition, read the script they give you. Do not change their script. Do not change one word. Because you know what that says? That says that you have some kind of a complex like you're the boss before you ever showed up. I've done castings for my own films. That's right. I have 900 videos on YouTube of which at least a half a dozen are short films. And one of them, yes you do, is a 45 minute spy adventure. That's right, I did a spy film. It was fun, it really was. I learned a lot through that production. I remember my actor, a wonderful actor named Michael Gavino, 
Michael memorized everything. The day of the shoot, I asked him, do you need to look at the script? He said, get it away from me. It'll ruin me. I've already got everything memorized. I've been working on my character for a few days. He was amazing. He was fantastic. Michael, if you're out there seeing this, thank you, buddy. You are a good example and a role model for an actor. You really are. You showed up on time. Everything was memorized. You knew everything down to the T. You had the accents right. Everything. You're a dream actor. I wish I could find, find another actor like you. I mean, you're out there doing it. Have a great time. Hollywood, L.A., New York, wherever you're at. Dude, we love you. Our audience loved you. Uh, you'll be on television because I'm putting your thing up on Galaxy Global Television, Michael. That's right. Michael showed up very prepared. Michael did not need to look at his script. He was very good. Everybody should be as good as Michael. He did a wonderful casting. You really did, which is same thing you need to do. You need to do a really good casting. Remember, you have that one in time that you can impress everybody. So think of your castings, think of your auditions as micro theater that you're going to be doing the performance of your lifetime. If you do that, you will be a successful professional actor, one with proper spirit, one with good enthusiasm, and one that's a pleasure to work with. Not a pain in the neck nobody wants to work with. Because even the major stars, when they become pains in the necks, guess what? Hollywood blacklists them. Do a little research and see how many actors no longer act because they have all sorts of strange personality issues. That's right. So, this has been Tad Sharp presenting for you advice for the professional actor. I hope some of you are actually listening and taking this in. And maybe you too can be in television like I have, film like I have, TV commercials like I have. And I got kicked out of acting school on his first day. But you know what? I'm such a pleasant guy to work with that hey, I get past all that. And I learned to act uh, naturally and through uh, television and from acting from other friends. And I've been imitating everything that I've ever watched on television forever, same thing in movies. I, when I was a kid, I was turning into Gomer Pyle because that's what that was. And they tell about this, hey, Sarge, you know, all kind of stuff. Yeah, but for some godly reason, that kind of built something into me because right now I can do quite a number of different roles. And I actually channel the roles. I become the roles. And ergo, I am the role. This has been Tad Sharp giving you advice for professional actors. Tune in for our next one. Thank you.